was presented by the mayor as an introduction to the town, its history, progress and expansion in recent years. The mayor highlighted the large number of projects that have been implemented by the Kurdistan regional government to boost the town. The mic was then handed to the Duluth delegation to talk of their city, which is the fourth largest in Minnesota. The Rania Youth Activities Center displayed a variety of activities, and Amastar Mohammed from Kurdistan Save the Children read out a report in English to familiarize the delegation with Kurdish history. On bilateral relations between the two sides, the head of the Youth Activities Center said, Last year we started to form relations with some residents of Duluth City who came across Rania and stayed for a while. Our relationship continued through emails and we both agreed on hosting a delegation from their city. Now I am very happy and proud that Duluth and Rania are establishing a sister city now. During their week-long stay we are looking forward to cultural exchange between the two sides and we will make sure they get to know the lifestyle of Kurdistan. Michel, a member of the Christian peacemaker teams and the liaison officer between the two cities, talked of the importance of the bilateral ties. We from Duluth are very, very happy to be here. We have been so grateful for the warm reception that we've received here. We are very excited to get to know the people of Rania better. We are very excited to begin a relationship of getting to know each other, our ways, our cultures, our customs, our uh, things that make us, us. And we are very happy to begin that process. We look forward to the day when people from Rania will be able to come to Duluth. We hope that will be in the very near future. I know our mayor has given a written invitation for people to come and visit us and see our way of life and to continue developing a strong friendship and relationship so that we can learn about each other more and that we can better the world for that. The music group of Rania's Youth Center played some pieces of traditional Kurdish music and a piece of artwork introduced the oldest standing house in Rania to the delegation. Amid other activities, a young talented boy named Between Muhammad painted some directions from different places of the town leading to the ancient house. <laughs> Today I try to make a piece of art for which the coming of the Duluth delegation is reflected in it. When I heard the news I came up with the idea of showing them the oldest house in Rania in an attractive way. The house is a beautiful example of Kurdish traditional architecture. A photo exhibition showcasing the many beautiful signs of Kurdish nature and lifestyle were also showcased. The delegation also visited a visual arts exhibition by four talented students of the center. One of the many places that the Duluth delegation visited was the internally displaced persons camp of Jarawa, just outside of Rania. The camp is home to over 130 families representing nine different villages that have been run out of their homes by ongoing shelling and bombing from Iran and Turkey. The reason we have come to Kurdistan is because of Michelle Nar Obed, and she has sent back reg regular reports to us about her work here and particularly about these camps. And so when we came to establish a relationship between Rania and Duluth, a long term friendship relationship, we wanted to be sure that we, we saw this part of the reality, the, the Kurdish reality. We've been hearing the story of. Uh, your whole history and your suffering and we've been hearing about how that goes on today and how it uh, how there have been bombings and uh, because of that we wanted to hear this firsthand and we want to we want to hear it so that we we can go back and uh, and be of influence where we can so that our the part that our government plays uh, in and allowing this bombing to take place, we'd like to try to raise our voices and see if we can make a difference. 
During their week-long stay, the delegation visited many government and non-government institutions and were impressed with the Kurdistan region's freedom, security and progress. Kurdistan is a land of many different civilizations, as proved throughout history. The existence of many archaeological and historic sites around the region is also a confirmation of this. The Choli Minaret in Erbil is another historic site that dates back to the 14th century. Inside Kurdistan takes a look. Kurdistan's capital Erbil is known in large for its citadel in the center of the city, along with the Sheikh Choli Minaret which is why Erbil is often referred to as Shari Kalau Minara, which means the city of citadel and minaret. The minaret was built under Sultan Muzaffaruddin dating back to the 14th century and is the last part of the oldest Kurdish mosque. Peculiar but splendid Kufi calligraphy can be seen. The names of Muhammad and Mas'udi Muhammadi, the builder of the minaret, were inscribed. It is ranked among the most significant Kurdish archaeological sites in history. Its condition is alarming, owing to the tight link of the upper part of the minaret. The lower seven-angle part of the minaret is 12 meters high. The circular part of the minaret is approximately 24 meters high and shelters a double spiral staircase. As stated by the owner, the thickness of the wall is roughly 36 centimeters. The minaret lost its upper part long ago and since then it has been subject to damage by weathering and rainwater leakage which has caused the upper part of the minaret to divert from the vertical axis to 65 centimeters and there is a substantial threat of its collapsing. Unfortunately, all the fragments of stucco decorations that have been found in it have also been seriously affected by weathering and mechanical damage. As another attempt to pay more attention to Kurdish culture and history, the KRG has contracted with the Gamma Art Group in the Czech Republic to renovate the Choli Minaret. In 2006, two Czech expeditions were dispatched to Erbil with the aim of basic monument documentation, archaeological investigation and finding appropriate technology for the restoration of these structures. One year ago, we uh, made a contract with the Ministry of Tourism and Heritage for stabilization and uh, conservation of Minaret Choli in Erbil. So we start last year and now the project is finished. The project was uh, focused on uh, stabilization and conservation. It means that we didn't not uh, do any, any new things on this minaret, for example, the completing of decorations or something like that, because it's the heritage and we have to take it only conserved. In a special ceremony which was attended by the Kurdish Minister of Tourism, Czech ambassador to Iraq, Erbil governor and many other guests, the Choli Minaret was opened once more. In a speech, the Kaji Minister of Tourism and Czech ambassador both expressed their happiness about these kinds of works and their importance. After one year working on maintenance of the minaret uh, according to uh, international standards and according to scientific procedures, which will protect the minaret from falling or bending more and also they had repaired all the damage which had been uh, appeared on the minaret due to the uh, weathers, uh, changing of weathers and also they put uh, uh, the real way to protect it uh, uh, from uh, more than changing coming in, in future. And we hope that they have done their work in a good way because we were controlling as Ministry of Tourism. Uh, we were uh, together with them looking for uh, the best way to do the maintenance. In his speech, the governor of Erbil, Nozad Hadi, thanked the Czech Republic for their activities in the Kurdistan region and announced that the renovation of the Erbil citadel will start soon. In aiming to pay more attention to the archaeological sites in Erbil, we have contracted with Czech companies to renovate them. Chonli Minaret 